Hi there, it's me, Rebecca Watson, Science YouTube's resident diet soft drink defender, logging on once again to address the rumors that, and I quote, the artificial sweetener aspartame is linked to anxiety. If you're new here, let me just address a few points before we dive in. First of all, I have some important conflicts of interest. On the one hand, I think Coca-Cola is an evil corporation that is helping to destroy the planet, and I fully believe that if they could legally get away with marketing a more addictive substance that caused people to, say, bleed from their anuses, they would absolutely do it. As I mentioned in a video last year, they're the largest producer of plastic pollution who refuse to invest in sustainable packaging and instead spend their billions of dollars lobbying politicians and supporting feel-good initiatives that actually do nothing to address the problem that they are creating. On the other hand, Coke Zero is delicious and I drink it every day. Second of all, you know, if you're new here, please note that every video I make has a helpful link you can find in the description that will take you to a full transcript uh, available for free over on my Patreon, which has links to everything I discuss so that if you'd like, you can learn and explore more. Okay, let's get into it. These headlines about a link between aspartame, a very common artificial sweetener, and anxiety are all based on this study, Transgenerational Transmission of Aspartame-Induced Anxiety and Changes in Glutamate, GABA Signaling, and Gene Expression in the Amygdala, published earlier this month in my favorite science journal, Penis. Some of the better headlines about the study managed to sneak in maybe the most important detail, which is that this study was done on mice, not humans. Different animals, of course, can be pretty good models for how people work, but they're never perfect. So uh, it's worth noting when a study is done on people compared to when it's done on mice. The other important thing to note is that there have already been studies on aspartame in humans, and they have found absolutely no link between aspartame and anxiety in humans. As the FDA points out, aspartame is one of the most exhaustively studied substances in the human food supply, with more than 100 studies supporting its safety. For instance, in 2015, a group of doctors, psychologists, and food safety specialists published a double-blinded randomized controlled trial of about 50 people who claimed to be sensitive to aspartame, and they compared them to 50 non-sensitive people. Using a comprehensive battery of psychological tests, biochemistry, and state-of-the-art metabonomics, there was no evidence of any acute adverse responses to aspartame. This independent study gives reassurance to both regulatory bodies and the public that acute ingestion of aspartame does not have any detectable psychological or metabolic effects in humans. That's just one of hundreds of studies that have been done over the past 50 years before and after aspartame was approved by the FDA in 1981, showing absolutely zero negative effects in humans, anxiety or otherwise. Despite that, the general public and a subset of researchers remain insistent upon trying to find something, anything to be scared of in aspartame and other artificial sweeteners. That's not to say I don't think that these studies should be done. I think this one did have an interesting result, which I will get to in a minute. But I also think that studies like this should have absolutely no impact on the behavior of the general public. Aspartame is safe for humans, and you absolutely should not worry about it after hearing about this study. So in this most recent study, researchers at Florida State University College of Medicine gave mice the equivalent of what they point out is below 15% of the FDA recommended maximum daily intake for humans. That makes it sound like a really small amount of aspartame, but it actually isn't. Because aspartame has been found again and again to be so safe for humans, the FDA says that you can consume absolute shit tons of it every day if you want. Below 15% of the FDA's recommended daily intake is actually about 64 ounces of Diet Coke per day, or about a two liter bottle. Are there people out there drinking that much? Absolutely. But it's not exactly what we would call normal. Still, it is worth studying that amount of aspartame. 
Mice who were given that amount of aspartame in water were more likely to show symptoms of anxiety. How do you tell when a mouse has anxiety? Well, you toss him into a field and you see how much time he spends in the exposed center versus how much time he spends around the darker, less exposed border. Anxious mice, just like anxious people, are more likely to hide in the dark, avoiding other people and playing video games. Well, I mean, they didn't test that last bit, but I bet if you gave mice the option, they would. Future research opportunity? Perhaps you can have that one for free, scientists. And sure enough, you know, mice that got the aspartame were more likely to show anxiety compared to mice who just got plain drinking water. Here's where the interesting result comes in. The researchers also found that the children of those anxious little mice were also more likely to be anxious despite not getting any, any aspartame for up to two generations. This is due to something called epigenetics, which is the study of how our environment and our behavior can change the way that our bodies deploy the code that is our DNA. Smoking cigarettes, for instance, it doesn't change your actual DNA, but it does seem to turn off a certain gene. When you stop smoking, after some time, that gene can click back on. A lot of these things are reversible. And a lot of recent epigenetic research is finding that those changes can be passed down from parents to children. In fact, this same Florida State University lab previously found that giving mice nicotine resulted in changes to the mouse sperm that affected the behavior of future generations, which inspired this new aspartame study. So that is the real takeaway here. Confirmation that, you know, what we eat and drink can be passed on to future generations, or at least support for that idea. Note that I'm not saying that aspartame doesn't have the same effect on human anxiety. What I am saying is that if there is an effect, it is far too small to actually show up in human trials. And I'll conclude the way I conclude every video about the supposed negative effects of aspartame, which is to compare it to the thing that it is meant to replace, sugar. And unlike aspartame, researchers have been able to detect a relationship between sugar and anxiety, as in this study published last year that looked at a cohort of more than 20,000 people and found modest age-specific associations between anxiety status and sugar intake among adults. Basically, they found that adults under the age of 45 who had high anxiety were more likely to consume large amounts of processed sugar. There are also case studies of patients who reduce their anxiety by cutting out processed sugar, like this one in which a 15-year-old changed her mostly refined sugar diet, which resulted in a substantial decrease in anxiety symptoms. A brief return to her previous diet caused a return of her anxiety symptoms, followed by improvement when she restarted the prescribed diet. Is that a smoking gun for sugar equals anxiety? No, but it is way more evidence than what we have for any supposed link between aspartame and anxiety. And don't even get me start, started on that other chemical that we often find that we consume alongside aspartame, which is caffeine, a substance that has an undeniable link with anxiety and nervousness to the point that it has its own DSM-5 classification. So if you do have bad anxiety and you want to change your diet to help with that, you should probably start by reducing your intake of caffeine and then maybe reducing your intake of processed sugar. Once that's done, maybe consider dropping your six pack of Diet Coke per day habit because... Sure, you know, it's probably not doing you any favors anyway, and also then you would be giving less money to an evil corporation, which honestly probably would help my own anxiety.